In the previous tutorial video, we show you how you can use an abstract user interface file as a textual file to automatically generate a starter project for our bank system. So overall, this starter project is going to be a very fast prototype for our bank application. As we gradually develop the business logic inside the model cluster, we'll see how things will work uh, the way that we expect. But for this video here, I just want to show you how you can at least get a feel about what how the uh, generated project will actually work from an external user's point of view. Okay, So I assume that you already had, uh, get access to the generated starter projects over here. So now I already opened that in the iPhone Studio and I already compiled that. It's guaranteed to compile. Okay, so now let's see there are two ways for you to launch the default project. Let me first point to you an uh, important class over here. If you uh, expand the uh, root class uh, under the root cluster over here and then go to root okay if you look at root class over here you can see there is a feature called switch so there are three possible modes that you can switch into okay i will show you the first two and the third one will be just about how you can do unit testing i'll show you that a little bit later okay so the first one which is default which is called a GUI show history. Basically, the first one is going to, as long as you launch the project, it's going to show you some GUI, uh, graphical user interface for your bank system. And the second one, which might be more useful as you build up the test cases, acceptance tests for your projects. So the second one, you, you really want to uh, switch that into maybe as you work. But the first one would be nice to actually see how things work to get some intuition. So let's keep the first one still is, we'll switch that a little bit later. Okay, so there are two ways to launch the starter project. Either you can simply click on run over here, or you can run it from the command line. I'll show you both. So I can either say run over here, and then it's going to launch the graphical user interface over here, okay? And then let me just make it a little bigger, and then I will drag uh, your attention to the relevant details. Okay, first of all, you can see that we got three different buttons here. Oh, there's a text uh, text box over here to enter whatever events that's going to be initiated by you as a user. And then we got execute to run the command, or we can reset uh, the current history, or we can load from some uh, pr uh, previous uh, session history. Okay, and then we start with a particular state. Remember, so far, everything has just been generated by the ETF uh, tool, you have not, as a programmer, put in any of your logic or code. Okay, that's why everything just by default, just to show you there's something that at least uh, is working. So what you gotta do is gradually refine the details for the business logic by yourself. Okay, so by uh, by default, we simply show some system states, and then we simply got some uh, integer counter. I will show you in later video how you can modify that counter value to get a feel how things work together. Okay, and also the status uh, text field over here, list of commands or events. So now, should be no surprise to you, remember the way we generate this current starter project by ETF is by specifying the uh, abstract user interface specification file over here, bank events. Let's just have a quick look, okay? Uh, as we have seen from the previous video, we got four possible commands or events that can be initiated by the external user of your application. New, deposit, withdraw, and transfer with the relevant parameter types. And if you go back to the GUI over here, new, deposit, withdraw, and transfer, which means when the ETF reads the abstract user interface file in order to generate a starter project, it takes into consideration all the commands or events in the abstract user interface file. Okay, that's why we, have, we got these four events exactly, no more and no less. Let's see how we can run this, uh, how we can interact with this uh, GUI over here. Let's do something simple, okay? What we can do is, uh, we can say, for example, I want to do a new, let's say, oh, by the way, if I simply say new, remember new is expecting an ID of type string. If I simply do new, let's say I put an integer, for example, let's say 23, which is not exactly what we expect, right? Because the type doesn't match. If I simply say execute, Okay, it's going to tell me it's a type error because 23 is actually an integer which does not match the expected string. So the generated project already got some type checking mechanism already built in in the GUI tool. That's why we say it's a very fast prototyping tool for your application. It's not really fancy GUI, but at least we got something that you can get an idea what the ultimate fancy application of your software might be. 
Okay, so now let's put something out. And also, if you say, for example, I want to put ID, let's say ID one, but I forget about closing the bracket, so it's more like a syntax error. If I say execute, it's going to say syntax error over here, and then you simply have some parse error in this line over here. Okay, so the ETF starter project is going to handle some basic syntax error if you're missing, a, for example, you're missing a parenthesis or type error when it is expecting a string, but you pass an integer, things like that. Okay, let's now do something that's syntax correct and also type correct. And as soon as we say execute, it's going to show this panel over here is the history panel. The first command or event that has just been executed was the new command, initiating ID1, okay? Uh, initializing ID1, account with ID1. And then we can just do another one, but notice that uh, and the current state has been incremented, the counter has been incremented from zero to one. We're just showing some uh, change of states by default, right? Uh, nothing very uh, specific to your logic just yet because we, because we haven't added it. Okay, let's just do another one new and then we can do ID two, okay? And then we can say execute. So now I've got ID one, ID two. And then let's do one more. Let's say we want to deposit let's say into ID one, let's say some integer value, right? And then we can say $234. And then we can just say enter as if we said uh, execute. And now, so we so far we got three events uh, with the system, okay? So now I want to show you one thing that's gonna be very useful if you want to uh, terminate the current run, but you want to rerun whatever you have tested so far. If you go back to your project folder, so this bank is the project folder, and then you will see that under bank, there is a file called session, okay? If you just open that, not surprisingly, these are exactly the trace of what you have just tested your system with, right? So you can always try to save the session file somewhere handy. So when you are playing with the GUI mode over here, uh, try to play with your application to see what the expected outcome, uh, what the actual outcome is. And then but later on, you simply want to save uh, this history over here, but you don't have to just do copy and paste because always there's gonna be a session.txt file for you, okay? So now that's about uh, the GUI mode. You can play with it and one, one more command that's uh, always available. You can say man, st uh, standing for manual. And then man is going to show you again the list of commands that you can use. Sometimes you may forget about what events are available for your starter projects. So you can always type man, standing for manual, like in Linux, to get uh, the list of commands. Okay, so that's about the GUI mode. I, about, I want to show you an alternative way of launching the GUI mode, which is default. Let me just close this over here. And then what I will do is I will go to the command line over here, command prompt. So now I'm currently under my ETF folder and also under bank. So what I will do is I'll try to launch the executable uh, from the W code from the command line. Okay, I can say fgens and then I got bank and also W code. And of course, if you finalize your project, you could you could say uh, F code and bank, okay? And over here, I can simply just uh, type enter, or you can uh, put a percent to run it in the background. If I do that, you will see exactly the same GUI mode because it's still the default mode. We haven't changed the switch yet. Now, we don't have to start from scratch. What we can do is you can simply say load and load by default is going to simply load from the previous session over here. That's why it's called session. So make sure if you try to rename your session to other file for your record, make sure there's always a, se always a session file over here in order for you to load. The load does not allow you to choose an arbitrary file. You always assume you got a sessions.txt in the, in the top level of your projects, okay? So we can say load here, and then if I just try to say maybe uh, transfer, from ID1 to ID2, let's say ID1 already got 234. What about we transfer $34, enter, okay? I think I might have made some mistake over here. Okay, exactly, you can see there's a typo, so there's no such command. Again, it's a type checking by the starter project. Uh, transfer, as soon as I say that, see, uh, enter, and you can see not only the previous command have been there, but also I append the new command into it, okay? So now again, uh, you can see the counter initially zero. Now after one, two, three, four, it has now become four. Of course, 
this is only the default behavior by the model uh, uh, under the hood, but we can change it later as I will show you in the later video. Okay, so that's about a GUI mode. If you really prefer the GUI mode for your development, feel free. However, I would say it's actually more useful to actually try out the other, uh, the command line mode, which might appear to be more productive to you, might turn out to be more productive. Let me close this over here. Let me now go to the root class as we have seen already. So now I want you to override the default mode. I want to say control K and then control shift K for the next line. And then, so now we're gonna recompile, make sure you recompile, otherwise it's not going to be effectful. As soon as they, as soon as they say compile and it uh, has been succeeded, so now the mode will be the command line for CL. Okay, for the command line, you just don't want to say run anymore. Don't do that. What you should do is go back to the command prompt over here, and then we simply do over here like this. If I simply say this from the if gen, it tells me it tells me that uh, a mode is not specified. Okay, you can go to this dash help. So now we are in the command line mode, but for the command line mode, there are also different options you can choose. If you didn't specify any option, it will be considered as an error. So you can simply say this uh, dash help. So you can definitely read it through. So these are the available options there, but the one I want to show you, which is more common, one is dash I for interactive mode, and also dash B for batch mode. That batch mode simply means, uh, interactive mode means you can use your keyboard to communicate with the uh, uh, application manually. Batch mode is more for regression testing. So as soon as you are confident with this particular trace that should be tested every time you introduce any new uh, extension or new fix into your software, you want to rerun all the test cases, batch mode will be useful. Okay, let me show you both. Okay, what I will do is, again, I have ifgens over here. So what I will do is I will go to over here rather than dash help option, I will say dash i. Let's try the interactive mode. I hit that, it's pretty much like the GUI mode, but now the way I communicate with it is not by button clicks anymore. Okay, so I simply say, if I can say man, it tells me all the commands or events that are available for me to communicate with the application. I can say, for example, new. Oh, okay, so you gotta, you gotta say new and then ID one, for example. Okay, it, you can see the system state changes from zero to one by default. Okay, and then let me just do one more so you get an idea. I can also say new, I can also say deposit, for example, let's say ID one into, let's say $23. Okay, that's also fine. But if I can introduce some error, let's say rather than ID one, I say ID one, 23, another $23. Now it's gonna tell me it's a syntax error, but somehow it does not really show me. So ID one is, uh, if that's not in quote, that means it's, uh, it's, it's supposed to refer to some variable name, but there's no such variable. That's why it's considered a syntax error. Okay. And then I can also say deposit, let's say ID one, let's say 23, uh, 34, how about that? So, which is not a number. So now it will type error, okay? So you get an idea. Okay, so now how do I quit from the uh, interactive mode? You can simply say quit, Q-U-I-T. Okay, that's more like an interactive console application for us. Again, that is why we said the original file that we had in order to generate the, uh, this current startup project is called abstract user interface. Simply because now you can see the way we interact with your application is by some very primitive, not very fancy user interface. That's sufficient for us to build some quick prototype for your application. Later on, once you're confident and have thoroughly tested your business logic, you can definitely refine such user interface into some fancy one with radio buttons, but, uh, text boxes, text fields, or uh, maybe spinner, okay, whatever you like. Okay, so now let's see the batch mode. The batch mode is expecting some files for you to run. So for example, how do I automate what I have just done over here, okay? You can see I did new ID one, and then I do uh, deposit and deposit, right? How do I automate this? What I can do is I can create a new file, okay? Just create a new file. I'm gonna do it over here. What I can do is I can, first of all, I LS, I'm now under, at the top level of the project, I'll go inside tests, and then under acceptance. Acceptance test simply means we are basically tested as if we were the clients for the applications. We don't have, uh, as opposed to unit testing. 
For unit testing, you have to call a particular feature or method inside your code. But for a sentence test, we simply communicate with the system using the uh, user interface uh, events over here. So it's different. So under a sentence, we got, uh, okay, we can simply create, we we'll just go there first, and then we have instructor students. Let me just go to instructor. Okay, so currently it's empty. So let me just create some file. You can definitely, uh, of course, you can simply just go to your file system over here, go inside bank, and sorry, go inside tests, and then go inside acceptance, go inside instructor. That's exactly where I am. Okay, so now I can simply say touch. Of course, you can just create a file by yourself. I can say AT1 standing for acceptance test number one. I can say 01.txt. And then over here, I'm just going to open that. Okay, AT01.txt. And then I can just do exactly what I did before. I can say new over here, uh, ID1. And then I can say ID2. And then I can say deposit into ID1 234 for example, okay? And then what we're gonna do is, you can also, uh, so this is so-called the acceptance file, okay? So that means each file, like AT1, AT2, AT3.txt, so these contain, uh, each one of them contains just a series of user-initiated commands or events that represent a particular test scenario for your application. And you can also put comments over here. You can say, by dash, uh, double dash, create a new, account with ID, ID1. And I can make a comment for the second one, and a new line doesn't matter, okay? ID2, and then you can say over here, deposit into the account with ID, ID1, an amount of dollar, uh, this is 234. Okay, so that's, we got three commands over here. Let's see what we will get uh, by running the batch mode. Okay, so that's the file you can always create, but since it's for testing purpose, I would suggest you create under the acceptance test uh, file uh, folder. Okay, so let's go back there. So now what we can do is, okay, so we, we are currently inside this acceptance and instructor file. Let's just go to the ifgens. I can go from here. Okay, dot, 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 I believe that's it. Okay, ifgens. And then I will go into uh, bank, W code, bank. Now, rather than dash I, I will say dash B for the batch mode. And then I can go for AT, uh, AT01.txt. As soon as I hit that, it's going to show me exactly, you can see, right? So what's the, what's the advantage of running the batch mode? That means when you are trying to figure out exactly the test cases for each scenario, you can definitely use the GUI mode. You can also use the uh, interactive mode to actually figure out exactly what you need. But to really add those test cases into your repository for regression testing, once you have done that, you better use the batch mode to run you every time to run your regression testing rather than just manually typing the test cases uh, yourself by the keyboard, okay? So that's how you run the batch mode. Apparently you can see we go from zero to one, one to two, two to three, there's something changing for the states of your system. But this part here somehow has not been overwritten by you as a software, software developer. You have developed some business logic so that the system state will actually make sense. So that's something we'll show you later in the video series.